nice uh, Aston Atlantic sort of very highly detailed very nice nice condition beautiful and uh, also an unseen car from our collection um, and today is the very first time we're going to run it in public uh, for those of the, those of you who know about Rover, you, know, you will know that it's not all pipe and slippers. Actually, Rover was a really technologically advanced company, certainly uh, from the early years after the, the Second World War, if not before. And they were involved with the development of the jet engine alongside Frank Whittle during the war and decided that they could turn the technology into into motoring, into a motor car as an alternative to the internal combustion engine. Uh, and they actually uh, invented the world's first gas turbine powered car, Jet One, uh, which nowadays you can see in the Science Museum in London. It's that important a motor car. Uh, but it didn't stop there. Uh, after 1950, they spent uh, another 20 or so years trying to make the technology work with a series of gas turbine cars, including the, uh, the amazing Rover BRM turbine that Jackie Stewart and Graham Hill raced at Le Mans in 1965, which we have in the museum and occasionally uh, we give an outing. But in order to get to that technology, a lot of hard work went in and a lot of testing. Uh, and along the way, uh, they had to try out different turbines, try out different technology. And the car that we've got uh, outside tonight, which is just by the burger stall over by the middle of the museum, is what's called a base unit. Uh, this is a kind of... Uh, engineering prototype, if you like, designed uh, to um, allow the engineers to easily exchange um, components, turbines, um, to test different solutions. Uh, but if you go and check it out, you'll see it's actually quite technolog really technologically about it advanced for 1955. Uh, it's not only a gas turbine, it's got inboard disc brakes, it's four-wheel drive, Suspension, the kind of thing that you later would see uh, developed in the Rover P6, for example. The turbine is in it is roughly equivalent to 100 bhp, uh, and uh, it operates around about uh, 600 to 700 degrees C inside, so it's quite warm when you get onto it. So, uh, after we've run the car, just, just my presenting would be quite hot. Um, it had an idle speed of roughly 20,000 RPM and a full chat is over 50,000 RPM. So, it's compared to your petrol motor. The prototype was used with a variety of turbines, brakes, suspension setups until 1966. Uh, when the Rover program was coming to an end and it was kind of parked in a full ride. And there it stayed and was moved from storage unit to storage unit and eventually became part of the museum collection uh, until 2017 uh, when a group of our volunteers, uh, who are all experts in the way of gas turbines, decided it was about time to gave it a dust off and saw if it would actually work. And they spent the last five years uh, in the museum, or maybe in their own ships, going through the car and then yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. to work in the condition. So tonight, when we run the car, it will be the first time for well over 50 years uh, that it's turned the wheel in public, so it's quite an occasion for us. So uh, please do go and speak to uh, Neil, Pete. Uh, Ian, John and Andy, who are our little team who uh, restored the car to operating condition and uh, enjoy uh, the sound of the gas turbine motion. So over to you guys to run the car.
Oh, things are getting serious. I think I might have to cover my ears up. I see they've all got their air defenders. So which bit would be the exhaust, do you think? <laughs> Is that the exhaust on the top? I expected it to take off like the, like the jet dragsters that no, you no, see no, at the no, drag no. show. <laughs> no. what, uh, what, what's the... Uh, sorry, you, you, you are... I'm, yeah, I'm no, Neil. I'm hello, sorry Neil. I, I might put this on YouTube if oh, that's, that's okay. Yeah? Fine, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Neil, can you just uh, tell me what uh, is the connection between the engine and the wheels? What's, what's the transmission? And what, it's, what, it, it is a direct drive from the power turbine so the the rather than it being a jet engine blowing the car along yeah yeah the jet engine bit blows a turbine round yeah okay and that turbine is coupled to the to the drive wheels coming back here, so yeah, yeah right, that's right. Right. so it's like in full stall when it yes when like you, stop, if you, you start with it stalled and just take the brake off if you compare it to a automatic transmission yes, it's like yes, it's yes, in yes, stall oh like okay that. bloody hell well, I've never heard anything like that other than a jet dragster. Same principle. Well, yeah. But they, they're they just jet, aren't they? Yeah, these are all propulsion. Yeah, no, yes. No, it's amazing. So these are propulsion. That was amazing and... Uh, yeah, um, I mean, you can see why it kind of didn't catch on because it's yeah. so noisy. And and just for the, just for the, yeah. yeah. And just for the record, that is the now, that is the world's oldest running gas turbine car. Wow, Neil, thank you very there's much. Only one older. Well, there are a couple older, but they're in, both in museums. Yeah. Um, never likely to run. This is. This was built in 1955. I know um, Dodge built some in the 60s, didn't they? Uh, yeah, like a, a number built of, some about 50 of them Austin or something. Austin had a go. Oh, yeah, um, Austin, yeah. Okay. GM, GM in the States. What's the uh, furthest it's been driven in recent oh, years? Um, this is oh, he's loving it. Give it a bit of boost. You're going to frighten that Capri up the drive. <laughs> getting confident now. He is, isn't he? 
As always. Drum, drum brakes? <laughs> no, 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 no. Inboard discs all round. Inboard discs? Well, yeah, just park it near his head. That's fine. What, um, what? Yeah, it's if, we park, we're, if we park it, we'll park it here and then we'll put it back in. Yeah, so people can't get that. That's amazing. Thank you very much, Neil, for the for the uh, rundown. Has it got has it got a reverse gear? Sorry. Has it got a reverse? Turn it off. It has. Put it in reverse and turn it back on again. Really? Because because running it in neutral is really not a good idea. No. Uh, because your turbine is free spinning then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so consequently, we um, we've actually put a bolted clamp uh, across the to, to, across the gear selector, so he can't he can't um, <laughs> uh, you can't select you can't change gear because uh, the gear yeah, needs. Yeah, yeah. If we wanted to move it reverse, we'd have to take the front panel off the off the Well, it, it's like. And It'll only be driven with like a gang of blokes around it, yes. won't you? Know, there's yes. plenty of hands to... So far as we know, there's only two of those gearboxes and the other one is already broken in all the Really? Oh, wow. We really don't want to break this one. Oh, God, yeah. That's um, amazing. Does, it, that, does that predate Jet 1 or...? No, no, no. That's no. post-Jet 1. It's post-Jet 1. Jet Hence one the Didion was, rear yeah, and Jet, Jet 1 was 1949 onwards. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the next car that Rover did was called T2 yeah um, and that was um, total disaster there were two um, versions of that um, the first one was a front engine rear wheel drive um, and, uh, car and they ducted the exhaust under the um, under the floor and probably set fire to the car oh ok well, that is amazing, I'm sorry. Well done, lads. A treat. Thank you. Thank you to Neil. That was a treat. Thank you very much indeed. That is completely crazy. Yeah, it's a bit hot. Yeah, that, that is 500 degrees. So don't yeah, touch yeah, it. yeah. Wow. That is amazing. Oh God, yeah. That is amazing. Thanks, guys. Fantastic. Well, that was a treat. That was a real treat to see that. That's the exhaust. Those are the inlets, I guess. Wow. And I did well there. I was talking to the main honcho. Do you like the uh, patination on the welding there? Look where it's been cleaned. It's just a, yeah, the, the silver bit. Um, um, it's just a, like a, a box frame with a couple of beams that go out. Um, the back, because as I, as I was saying to somebody, the engine mounting is a bit peculiar with these, these ends early engines. It's mounted from the gearbox, which is sort of sits on the top of that beam, right. just behind there. Yeah. And the other end of the engine is supported by the intakes. Yeah. The, so basically, through holes in the side of the engine. These are the air intakes. But that means that there's really nothing much structural at the back. No. What, so, what, it's taken you some years to get it going. What was the main bulk of the work? Stripping and rebuilding the engine. Um, the, it's very interesting. It's, it's not the engine that we were expecting to find it had in it. Okay. It's an, an earlier one. Ah. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, we're gas turbine engineers, so we've yeah. for hours about the differences between yeah. um, so, layouts and turbine. Say. But this is, this is really a, a, a rare thing. This is a, what's known as an Aurora 3. 
Belgium. Um, and it <laughs> you can see it just going over. Yeah, yeah. Because we're not going to. Yeah. But, yeah. May, may I just ask, when you say you stripped it, was it just the case because it's a, it was completely unknown, so you just had to strip it to see what was there, we didn't dare evaluate. Yes, yeah, make sure. It wasn't like it was all blown up and damaged. Oh, or no, anything. no, 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 no. It was all hard. Yeah. And I was saying to somebody earlier on, it's it's a, a tribute to both the the state of the storage yeah. and the original engineering of this. Yeah. That in five years of stripping this down nut and bolt to absolutely nothing and rebuilding it, yeah. we did not find a single nut and bolt that would come undone. Wow. Not That's amazing, one. yeah. Uh, it, this had, yes, worth it. Yeah, so we, we, we've replaced it with modern. Yeah. Is it all um, SAE, you know, UNF, UNC, or...? Uh, it's, it's, this is all UNF. Yeah. Um, because this is Rover. Yeah. Really interesting, when you work on the, as we do, work on the BRM. No, it was the first time he'd ever been. That's really interesting, because the engine is UNF. The bodywork and the chassis and the running gear is all BRM, which is all Whitman. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need two completely different sets of Spanners. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All the bodies are uh, metric and yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Thanks very much, Neil. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. It's a, a real treat to hear, hear yeah. and see it yeah. running. I mean, it is. We are. Well, you can probably tell. We are more than a little elated, given that. Yes. This has been a, a five-year project. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, we actually returned it to the museum a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, and we've been, you know, they've been waiting to organise. Yeah. And it's been sat in the oh. workshop. So you didn't even have a little tickle around well, the car park. We had a little tickle this morning. Oh, good. Um, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. The first time we touched it since yeah. March. Yeah. Um, we brought it out, started on the button first time. Yeah. We drove it up the road and right down again. Wow. No wow. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Um, Thank you. This thing was built in. <laughs>